guys. Um, I lost my husband to the police September of 2019 to Richfield and Edina police officers, also in Hennepin County. Um, this is Tashira Garraway, uh, and she had lost. Go ahead, you can speak for yourself, girl. Um, we're here, we're out here, we have 12 families that's out here today that lost their loved ones at the hands of police here in the state of Minnesota. Um, and also we have loved ones that came from out of state to stand with us today. Uh, this is a serious matter, even though George lost his life and it was, it, it is, it is unfortunate. Um, and it is painful that George lost his life. But George is the face of hundreds of murders in the state of Minnesota and thousands of murders around the United States. We have come together as families to fight for justice for our loved ones. There is no peace without justice. There is no peace without justice because our families don't get peace. Our families have not had peace since one woman who stands here from 1997 when they murdered her loved one. Still no justice. My name is Tashira Garraway. I am the founder of Family Supporting Families Against Police Violence and I have come here today as also a loved one. I lost the father of my son, Justin Tigan, at the hands of the St. Paul Police. He was brutally beaten and thrown inside of a dumpster. Justin had dog bites all over his body. His skull was cracked in half. Uh, he, he was brutally beaten, a 2009 Emma Teal. We are calling for the governor to meet with us. He has ignored us three times before this happened to George. It was permitted because we have asked the people in the political seats to come forward and speak with the families, go through these files and give our families the justice we deserve. And they ignored that cry. So now we're in what we're going through right now. So today the families are gonna come forward and tell their stories about what happened to their loved ones. 12 families standing out here and that's just the tip of the iceberg. We got way more families that's coming out and coming forward. What's been going on here in the state of Minnesota? Hello, my name is Amity Dimmick. I'm the mother of Kobe Dimmick Heisler. This is his maternal aunt, little sister, stepfather, maternal uncle. Kobe was murdered by the Brooklyn Center Police on August 31st of 2019. He was suffering from a mental health episode. Um, he had a uh, knife and a hammer and he was going to uh, hurt himself. The grandparents called the police. Like many mental health situations, they got it under control. The police decided to come in anyhow and check on him because they said they were concerned. Apparently they were so concerned that they came in and shot him in the head and then left him to lay on the floor for so long that he could not donate his organs. Nine months to this day and we don't have answers and the case is still open. I need Kobe's name to be known and I need justice for Kobe. Justice, justice for, Kobe. for Kobe! Justice 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 for Kobe. My name is Angel Buchner. Um, I am representing George Floyd. He was murdered by um, Minneapolis Police Department about six or seven days ago. I can't even count anymore. Um, Officer Tao um, was not an innocent cop in this because he kept people at bay by um, threatening to shoot them while Officer Shuvanov had his knee to George Floyd's neck and left it there for almost nine minutes until life was no more. We want justice for George Floyd. And we want it now. Justice. Hello, everyone, and thank you all for coming out. Sorry for all of your losses. I know what it feels like, trust me. Justice for George. George, there. George Floyd, there. 
is a reminder of my son Jaffer's death. So when George died, Jaffer died all over again. There is no excuse for this. There is no excuse for anyone to go out and kill. I come from a family of police. I know. Tell what happened to Jeffrey this morning. Jeffrey was shot down by four police officers. Four, four, four police officers. St. Paul. St. Paul police officers. 49 and 52 times. And top it off, they got a shotgun out of the car and stood over him and shot him with a shotgun. Our DAs, our DAs approved this shit. Our governor did not approve this shit. Our attorney general approved this. And you and I, the governor, state police chief, all know that this was an assassination on my son. Yeah. It was an assassination for George. It was an assassination for all of our families yeah. out here. It was wrong, and it's time. One thing I know, this pandemic has blessed us. This riot has blessed us. Because if it wasn't for this, they wouldn't listen to us. I don't approve of the violence. I'm not a part of it. But I can tell you this. It is out of my hands. my son Demetrius Hill who got killed by Victor in 1997. My son was victimized by the by police brutality in, in Westminster in St. Paul, Minnesota on the west side. He was shot down in the back by Victor and a couple of other guys which that's not that was unknown but I do know that when we got to the hospital they said to me that a black guy shot my son and they had him already arrested. And come to find out, they pulled guns on us and told us to leave the hospital right after I got there to find out my son had passed away. As time went on, I'm thinking a black guy shot my son to come to find out. They've told me for five years, I thought it was a Hmong police guy. And all these years that I suffered in pain, looking at Hmong guys, want to hurt one of these police officers to come to find out it was a white police officer done this killing. He set my son up to kill him because my son told me, Mom, the cops are trying to kill me. Me, I'm not understanding what he was telling me, but he was having dreams that this was going to happen. They were already trying to plot to murder my son, and they succeeded. I just want justice because this police brutality needs to quit. I, I'm down for this to stop. This is no such thing. This, this should not be happening. You know, these police is walking around thinking they can kill the black brothers of America when they knowing that they're wrong for doing it because they don't want to see us succeed in life. They believe that black need to be down all the time. They don't want us to grow up and be nobody. But I know God is with you people yes. and they're going to always be there for us because justice will be served. Yes. And they just yes. don't realize it because the day my son got killed, 10 years later, that officer got shot in the back like he shot my son yeah. in the back. So I know justice is going to be served. The day they walked around thinking that they could keep on killing, they yeah. threatened people. When instead had them leaving town, they didn't want no one to realize that they were like that. They had friends of my son actually leaving. They go to their house threatening them. They had things about uh, what they're going to do to the family if they talked. Yeah. A few guys lost their life the over truth. the last five, five years among that time span. Wow. They end up dead. And I don't know how. I hired a private investigator 
the private investigator was an ex-police officer. All of a sudden, he got the police report. He disappeared. Oh, wow. I hired a, a lawyer. Oh, my God. A month later, the lawyer sends my information back, and it was scribbled out all the names. Oh. He said he dis in a, he disappeared. Yeah. So I know they teamed up against us. You know, they call themselves running together. The mayor, the Congress, the, the you know, the whole, well, all you can think of is all for us to talk against us. But all I can say is we're going to pray for justice, and we know that eventually something's going to break because this can't keep going on. Hi, my name is Paula Quinn. My son Philip Quinn was murdered by the St. Paul Police Department. Um, that's all I did was just call for help. He was suicidal, and that's all I wanted to do was call the cops to ask them to come and help me for I could get him some help and commit him into the hospital. Instead, they came with their guns drawn and started shooting at him. They say that he was running forward, but that's not what happened. And Officer McGuire, I told him when my son was down, okay, okay, you got him, he's down, don't kill him. And the last thing was he started shooting my son in the back on the ground. Please give justice to all the families. Justice! justice. My name is Gabriel Black Elk. I am the brother of Paul Castaway, who was killed by Denver police in Denver, Colorado on July 12, 2015. <coughs> I moved here a couple years ago to get away from all the gang stalking that was happening with my family. So I'm out here representing my brother, Native Lives Matter, and for all the families that are killed by police. Thank you. Justice for Paul! Justice for Paul! Hello, I'm here to represent Dantelo Chicken Wang Wright. He was not my blood relative, but that man was my nephew. He was very close to my nephews. And on May 31st, 2012, somebody had called to report a man who was carrying a gun. And Chicken Wing was not in the white mind when he was in the stance. He was having a mental breakdown and he was suicidal, saying he was only going to harm himself. When it came down to it, Brooklyn Center Police and Minneapolis Police Department went and responded to the call and shot Don Taylor down. And once he was down, they had a dog drag his body about 10 feet. Chicken Wing died at the scene. And that was in 2012, before we even thought about protesting, before we gathered to, as a community, even gathered with other families to share our grief and to share our pain and to express that feeling with one another. And so I appreciate all the families coming out and I appreciate everybody standing with us and fighting with us and especially fighting the military and fighting the white supremacist groups against us. Yeah. I'm here representing my nephew, Billy Hughes, and over here in St. Paul, and he, somebody called because there was a dom domestic downstairs, and th then they were pounding on Billy's um, door, so he opened up the door, and as soon, as soon as he opened up the door, they started shooting him a whole bunch, even a bullet went next door to the, the, the neighbor's house, but yeah, he didn't do nothing. He, he wasn't even... the. Oh my God! They were called for that domestic downstairs, and then they just murdered him like that. That's this for Billy. Justice for Billy. Mark Clark's sister, and my name is Danielle Awake. 
and um, my brother was killed 11 15 15 he was sent into a party and he called me that day to ask if I was going to come to that party because we knew the people he was at and I told him I may come because I had to care for a daughter that was sick and so Jamar had uh Tend to the party and called me and said, Sis, is you coming? I'm like, No, I can't come because I'm tending to your niece. You know, he's like, Okay. He was at a party with a friend who the couples who party it was had an altercation and it got so loud that someone called the police. Police never even showed up for that call. Okay, so when she tried to dis, dis, try to stop the fight among two two married people, she hurt her leg trying to stop them from fighting. My brother picked her up and told her that's husband and wife, stay out of that. Picked her up and told her, as when she fell, she hurt herself. So when he picked her up, he was helping her to get upstairs where she stayed at on Plymouth. When she went upstairs, he proceeded to go outside. I think he got her inside. She went outside. It's okay. And she called the ambulance because she couldn't bear the pain no more. So when she called the ambulance, my brother seen that she was being pulled out of the stretcher. So when he seen that she was being pulled out of the stretcher, he went over to the ambulance to see about her. Amalams didn't like him. He was, it was late at night. Amalams didn't like him being around, I guess, in the inside. She was so doped up. You know, she was already been drinking at this party. I don't know what was said on that part, but I know what my brother was doing. He was checking on a friend. And is it wrong to check on a friend? He didn't it deserved to be shot like that. When the police arrived, they immediately handcuffed him. And then they choked hold him and slammed him down. Two cops, four precinct, one on his back and the other one. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. They choked him. And when they choked him, they thought he was dead. So what they do is made an excuse by shooting him. No. They shot him. We need justice! We need justice! All the family spoke for me. Okay. So, as you can see, again, this is the tip of the iceberg. It was only 12 families out here today. As you can see, you can see pain. It's pain in our communities. It's pain in our communities. These people, people that's living in these governor's mansion has allowed this. What you see with the burning of the building is pain. Do you think that this is just about one man? You think this place would be getting tore up like this about one man? No, he's the face. He's the face of hundreds of murders in Minnesota and thousands around the United States. And we are tired. We are tired. We are tired. They are talking about their buildings burning down. But my son's father can never come home. My son, my 14 year old son can never see his dad again. These buildings can be rebuilt. Yes. 
But what about our lives? What about the people that we love? Y'all care more about money than people. And God is bringing it down. God is bringing it down. God is bringing it down. The pain that these police officers have inflicted on our families and people in the political seats has permitted it. You have permitted it. We asked to speak to the governor three times before. I told the attorney general five months ago, if you don't reopen these cases and bring forth the truth, it's gonna be retaliation and now look. So this is on your hands, not the community, not the people showing pain. This is what you've done instead of bringing in those officers. Because if you bring them in, you would admit that you're wrong. So instead of admitting that you're wrong for killing a black man, for taking his life, you'd rather let it burn. Yeah. You're doing this. Yeah. The people in the political seats is doing this. Capture them and bring them in. That's right. All yeah. four of them. Yes. All yes. four of them. Yes. They're, they're yes. All, they all was there and yes. guilty. Yes. We have some points that we want to touch on. Um, not only do we feel that it is um, just the higher higher people in the seats job to get the job done, we all need to be hold up, holding, holding each other accountable. That includes police officers and people in the power yeah. holding each other accountable. Get that. You guys know it's wrong. We've seen it across the world now that police yes. are joining the community because they are the community, joining us in the fight for justice. You know it's wrong and you need to either call out the ones that are causing the problem, stop your comrades from killing us, or you're part of the problem. Exactly. I also want to say thank you for uh, for yesterday. We had some guests here from California. We had uh, Robert Fisher, Joe Collins, and Major Williams who put their life down for yes. us out here. Yes. And um, everybody in California, you need to support these three men. They're here with uh, the breath of life. Make sure to support these three men in California. Um, also, challenge yourself to finding... Here, get them. It's, it's fine. It's fine. We get them. Uh, here, I'll, I'll, I'll show it. Tyrone Carter, ex-football player. supporting us throughout this whole entire thing from far away. Everybody challenge yourself to find these families in your communities. We need your support. And we, need, we need the officers. We need officers to come forward and we need the harassment to 
stop as well. You know, when you murder our people, this is so inhumane for you to follow the loved ones, attack the loved ones, write bad messages uh, to send out to the public in a newspaper after you kill our people. This is inhumane behavior. We need you to step down and take your badge off. If you don't believe that people deserve to live and have a, you know, a life, you need to just step down. That's not the job for you. Um, just, you know, and the officers that know that this is wrong, come forward, come forward, have the humanity, put your position aside as a human being and realize what's happening is wrong. That's what we're asking for. That's what we're asking you all to do is to put your position aside, the people in the political seats, and just come forward and fight with the people that deserve justice. That's all. Oh, if you guys are looking for the truth, you can always go to Unicorn Riot. We need to start controlling the truth and the narrative that's really going on here because the media is a damn lie. That's right. So go to Unicorn Riot, subscribe to whatever they got, support these people. They are out here risking their necks on behalf of our loved ones, on behalf of your community to get you the truth. And all the families, uh, families supporting families against police violence, please find us on Facebook, uh, find us on our website. We are here to support each other, and your voices are important to all of us. It needs to be justice for all, and justice for George Floyd immediately. Justice for all, stole the lives! 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 Also, we ask that you can even visit the website, which is fslfapv.wordpress.com. Uh, fslfapv.wordpress.com. Um, we're asking that uh, even George's family come and stand with the rest of the families. Uh, we want to support the families. We want to be here for one another because nobody knows our pain like we know. No one is living it like we have had to live it. No one knows what this feel like to have people sitting outside your home when you already hurt and they done already threw your loved one in the trash. No one knows what that feels like but the family. So we are walking the same walk. So we are asking and calling for George's family to come stand with the rest of the families. I got these two more families that want to speak quickly and then we're, we're gonna um, dismiss. Yes, I'm Meryl. I have a few more things to say. You know, I was just thinking about, you know, the time when my son was sitting there in the apartment building. The officer shot him in the back. He actually shot him three times. He shot him in the back. He turned around, shot him in the stomach, and then he shot him in his knee. When he fell down the stairs, he asked the officer why. Why did you do this? He didn't call him by his name. He called him by Michi. My daddy opened up the door and he pulled a gun out on my dad and told my dad to go back in the go back in the house in the apartment. But my aunt, she saw it. All these years, I'm just now finding out that she said she saw the officer shoot my son. And I just feel like you know, by them carrying my son instead of waiting on the paramedics, they were intending on killing my son because when he was shot in his back. How can you shoot a guy with a 22 and no no uh, no blood shed? He shot him with a gun that that wasn't even supposed to be in his uh in his uh, dumb dumb bullets. Yes, the kinds that go inside and, and it slowly. closes up inside. Yes. When he got to the hospital and I was in there literally looking at him, there was no blood. They did emergency surgery on my son, but there was no blood. So I know he was tending on killing my son. That's why I feel like these polices are dangerous. They want to destroy because they nothing but the devils themselves, and they need justice. Somehow it got to be stopped because we can't live in peace. Because right now how they setting fires trying to blame the brothers, they trying to put these fires on us when that, that needs to be stopped. All we want is we want justice because we're tired of it. We came to a point, even though we don't have the peace, but we should be able to have our free will and, 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 and freedom to be able to have choices in life and to be able to represent ourselves when we stand strong for our own color. 
and that's what I feel. They don't want to see us have nothing better than them. So that's why I feel more power to the freedom. Power to the freedom. Yes. I just want to say one more thing. Um, you know, when they did that to my nephew, Phil Quinn and the other ones, I said, I call them, I call them a cop gangs, you know. They're worse than the gangs on the f streets. Okay. Is that? That's yeah. True. yeah. They keep murdering, murdering, and get away with it. And the people that are, murder somebody on the street, then they go to prison for the rest of their lives. Uh -huh. Okay, that's all I got to say. Justice! justice! No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! No justice! Anybody that would like to come forward and speak? If not, we can I would like to add just one more point to my son's story. Yes, please. Mother of Phoebe Dimmick-Eisler. I would just like to tell you how bad I think the situation with police interactions is with people of both color and mental health issues. I was able to predict four days in advance and say out loud at a board meeting for mental health that I had the fear that I was going to get the call that my son was going to be murdered due to a police interaction with police officers and I literally got that call four days later. I just have to make that point to show you how bad the situation is on so many levels and I've said it before, we don't have just a race problem, we have a policing problem right. and yeah. a politician That's problem. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. My name is Don Williams. Brian Quinones is my grandson. Um, this, the pain that these people suffer, my family's been suffering since September 7th of 2019. I'm going to tell you this: the guy that lives here, and Mike Freeman, and Keith Ellison, you need to go. Yeah, that's right. all of them. All right. That's right. So I've dealt and listened to Mike Freeman's bullshit for a long time, yeah. for nine months. All right. <laughs> I read his report, or his people's report on Brian's death, and things that I said were twisted uh -huh. and misconstrued. Tell them. All right? And I know they lie. All right? And they didn't talk to witnesses. There's not a witness statement in that report that I could find. How can you do this? You're evil. And you need to go, Mike Freeman. Yeah. Yes. Mike Freeman. We went to. So many board meetings in Edina and in Richfield. Yeah. And sitting in Edina, they told us this isn't Ferguson. So basically, we don't matter for shit because this isn't Ferguson. So basically, you bring us Ferguson, maybe we'll do something. Well, guess what, folks? You got Ferguson. Yeah. Okay. this guy, to take pressure off of Mike Freeman, I'm sure, just assigned our Attorney General Keith Ellison to prosecute Ooh. this cop. Oh. If they get a conviction, they can blame a black man. Well, there's that. There is that. But here's the deal. Keith Ellison impaneled this big group, an organization, to listen to families and to take their suggestions and to affect change. And everybody on his panel we're policemen and politicians, except for one person. Okay, Philando Castillo's dad was on that. Uncle, excuse me, uncle. Philando Castillo's uncle was on that panel. One person, one person that's a victim was on that panel. And guess what, Keith? All those recommendations, you ain't done shit. Okay? So I'm going to put this out there for you. And this is a white man's opinion, all right? But here's the deal. Governor Walls, you just assigned the two worst people in this state to prosecute this cop that killed George Floyd. Okay? You got a dangerous man 
Mike Freeman, and you got a worthless man in Keith Ellis. his career jumping from political agenda to political agenda and doesn't get shit done. No. no. Okay? So this is what I see. And again, I'm just a lonely white man. And you can call me biased and you can call me pissed because you murdered my grandson. Here's the deal. You got more people in charge of prosecuting this bad cop and you haven't arrested these other three. Right? And here it is. You scratch my back, I scratch your back. So you got three guys here that'll be scratching each other's back That's right. and making shit happen. Yeah. But it's gonna be the wrong shit. Yeah. And, you think, and you think this is bad? I'm mad. I'm angry and I'm hurt. And I watch my granddaughter every night. And I see the pain. And my 13-year-old great-grandson has to live with this shit that you people brought on. That's right. Do your job. Do your job. Get rid of these clowns and move these cops. And Bob Kroll, you can kiss my fucking ass. about their loved ones. Um, again, I wish this was not my story. You don't have the time. I need you guys. I need you. Sorry. <laughs> um, I wish this wasn't my story, but it is. But a man that ends up in the trash, everybody needs to know when a man ends up in the garbage. That's right. Yeah. This man, this man, ended up in the garbage. He was brutally beaten by the St. Paul police and thrown in a dumpster. This man, this man is the father of my now 14 year old son. What's his name? His name is Justin Tigan. Say it. Justin Tigan. 
It's also someone that didn't make it today. His sister, she went back to California, but it's Isaac Aiden that was murdered. Yes. yes. Shot down like a dog. So we had 12 families out here speaking today. And that's only the tip of the iceberg. There's hundreds of more murders, hundreds of more cover-ups here in the state of Minnesota. Not only do they murder our loved ones, and throw him in the trash. He was brutally beaten and thrown in the trash. A 2009 Emma Till. That's what it was. A 2009 Emma Till. I've never seen anything more gruesome than my son's father. And FYI, the officer that murdered George lived 11 minutes away from my home. And they would not go and get that man and put him in jail. I have a 14 year old son that lives 11 minutes away from the killer. Damn oh, pops out here. So I'm, I'm asking today that you guys, hopefully they jo join us, but I'm asking, I'm asking that these officers come forward. Just Amen. come forward. You did wrong. You killed somebody. Amen. Come forward. Amen. Turn yourself in. Take Amen. your badge off and turn yourself in. Be you man. killed somebody. Uh -huh. Be a man of integrity. Yes. Do something that you haven't done. Man up. Be a man of integrity. That's right. To the people in the seats, Mike Freeman, be a man of integrity and and, and prosecute these officers or step down. Do Do your job. Yes. Or step yes. down yes. and let somebody else come forward. Yes. If they're not killing our man in the street, you know what they're doing next? They're letting him die on the floor. That's so right. we're gonna have a mother come forward that her son died in a in a jail here in Minnesota yes. because they neglected him and he was crying for help and they laughed at that man. Yes. Yes. Tell them. Yes. 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 We got your back. 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 Oh, Lord Jesus. This is our son. Take your time. Oh. Say his name. Say his Mar name. Hardell Sherl. 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 Say his name. Hardell Sherl. My name is Delshia Perry. And uh, I've been here for 50 years. I'm 53 years old. This is my home. I was born in Chicago, but I was raised here. My baby was born here in Children's Hospital. So he was a Minnesotan, 27 years long, 27 years short. On September 2nd of 2018, I, I got a call telling me that my son had died in a Beltrami County jail cell after only being in custody for nine days. I want y'all to take a real good look at this picture right here. And those of you who have not seen this video, if you think George Floyd's video is bad, oh my Lord Jesus, brace yourself for this one. And it wasn't right. Six long, agonizing days. We're not even talking about minutes, okay? We're talking about days. My son walked into the jail cell, healthy and ready to own up to what he had done wrong and he was ready to pay his debt to society. But they did not give him the opportunity to even take his case to court because nine days later they were carrying my baby, my only child, out in a body bag. 14th Amendment right violated because they did not want to provide simple medical care. My baby called me crying said, Mama, they don't believe me. They think that I'm faking it. They think that I'm lying. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. You all just don't know the pain of a mother who is grieving and trying to fight. A grieving mother 
trying to fight at the same time? Yes. Yes. It's not right. No, it's not right. No, no, no. And as I sit here and I talk about my own child, I know it's not about my own child. Come on, somebody. Yes. That's yes. what yes. we're George. here for. It's not just about George Floyd. There's a lot of George Floyds here. Yes. 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 And we are asking for justice for Mr. Aiden's family who was here and left, as my sister had mentioned, and Kobe Rose's family, yeah. Mikkel Rose. There's so many, there's so many names. Yeah. Even the people that are in the Be Beltrami County Jail in Bemidji that died yes. before my son's death, Tony May. Wow. <laughs> Several other people that died before that, and the people that have died after my son. People have been calling me from Bemidji asking me, what do we do? What can we do? What can you do? Can we come together? That's a four hour trip. I'm like, I'll go wherever I can go, wherever I need to go to tell this story. That's right. Yes, because this is a story of injustice That's to the right. highest degree. Yes. Now, the one thing I want to mention to you is on tell the 15th him. of May, the Department of DOC's head commissioner, Paul Schnell, opened up my son's case ah, oh. because we demanded that they yes. answer for the yes. right. yes. we, yes. we told them that there were multiple violations, but they said no, there were no violations. Two months after my son's death, they came back and said no, there were no violations. We knew that was a lie from the pit of hell. Yes. Yes. So they did a re-review. And I thank God they did that re-review. Oh, yes, because what God spoke to me and told me Come on. was that either they can tell the truth now or they'll be exposed later. Yes. Well, they're being exposed ah! right now. Right now. Yes. My God is not a man. That he should lie. Come yeah. on. Come on. If he said it, come on. So be it. Hey. Right. His word yes. is what I stand on. Amen. My God, my God. has the final say. Yeah. Right. My God, my God. Will, bring, will bring the justice. Yeah. Yeah. My God yeah. will bring the victory. Come on. My God, God. Yes. is the God that I serve. Come on. The one and only. Yes. The Alpha, the Omega. Yes. Beginning and end. I got to come in peace because that's me. And I'm going to leave in peace because that's me. That's right. I condone the looters. But I understand they pay. I condone the fires. But hey, I understand they pay. It's not me. It's not how I got to walk out of here. If I die from COVID 19, it's because I died. Yes. Telling them about what they did to my baby. Yes. Yes. The word of God. Yes. The word of God says yes. all things, Romans 8 28. Come on, all, all things, things. All all things. things. Work, together work together for the good. For the good. Jesus. Yeah, oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Minnesota's on fire, but this is a cornerstone. Come on. And God is going to set the record straight yes. with this state leading the way. Because we are a people that is tired and sick and tired and sick and tired and sick. Never thought in a million years 
I'm out here preaching the gospel. I'm out here trying to lead people to Christ. I'm out here telling them about peace. I'm out here telling them about love. I'm out feeding the homeless. I'm out doing what the God has called me to do. And then I come back. Yes, yes. I come back to this. I asked God to send me back home. Because I was in Atlanta, Georgia, feeding the homeless. And I asked God to let me come back so that my son would know who he was. That he would have a personal relationship like his mama. Does. Come on. Amen. That his grandbaby, that my grandbaby, yeah. now I got three, but at the time I only had the one, that she, that I would be able to plant a seed in her. That's right. That that seed would grow. That's right. And it would multiply. That's right. And that she would one day grow up and she would tell the good news. Amen. She would go and tell people that this is not right because it's not of God. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. And what I'm calling on everybody today to do is to stand of the word of God. Yay. Yeah. Right, and to stand. Solid rock. Yes, ma'am. Yes, to stand, stand as a unity, yeah. as a of a people yeah. that are united. Body, because yeah. if we do not unite, Amen. we will fall. Amen. Right. United, Amen. We right. united we stand. Divided, divided we fall. fall. United we stand. Divided we fall. United we stand. Divided we fall. United we stand. Divided we fall. Why daddy have to go? 
Yeah. I want to go home and be with my daddy. Yep. And I got to be strong for them and say, no, That's baby, right. you got to stay here and help grandma be strong right. so that y'all can come behind me yes. and do work, the work of the Lord. Amen. Y'all got to come up behind me. Yes. So I just thank each and every one of y'all. And I thank cover you. everybody in the blood of Jesus that no weapon formed against us hey. shall pray. And I'm out. Oh, 
tough guy out here. He's a tough guy. He's not even pissing the rest, bro. Get home, man. Yeah, folks playing right now. We've got the governor's mansion. I'm listening to the video of George Floyd being murdered. Put him in the car. So we that That's a bum ass shit, bro. That's a bum ass shit, bro. Y'all know that. He's that shit that he's on his neck, bro. Bro, he ain't fine, bro. Bro, he doesn't have it, bro. He's not fucking moving. Bro, bro, what did you see in 87, bro? You're a bum, bro. In 97, bro, you're a bum. First thing you want to grab is your mace because you're scared, bro. Scared of fucking minorities of fucking bum, bro. Like, bro, three minutes, bro. He's not fucking moving. Bro, he's not even fucking moving. Get off of his fucking neck, bro. Get off of his neck. Are you serious? Bro, are you serious? Hey, you gonna keep your, you gonna keep, you gonna keep your, 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 you Bro, you know, he's just gonna let him keep his hand on his neck, bro. You're a bitch, bro. Tyler, you gonna let him keep that like that? You gonna let him kill that man in front of you, bro? Huh? Huh? Like what? Bro, he's not even fucking moving right now, bro. He's not even fucking moving. Bro, bro, stay. Okay. Hold on, you guys are stuck. Hold on, you guys are stuck. Hold on, you guys are stuck. What we seen with George? What we. What we seen with George is the face of hundreds, hundreds in the state of Minnesota that's been covered up. Put your positions aside, Mike Freeman. Put your positions aside. And think about a human being. It took God. It took God, it took George to lose his, lose his life for us to come together it like this. A man in a garbage can, Justin Tigan, thrown in a dumpster by the St. Paul police. Brutally beaten and thrown in a dumpster by the St. Paul police. Justin Tigan. Brian Quinones, Cordell Handy, Jefford Smith, Demetrius, Demetrius Hill, Fernando Castillo, Jamar Clark, Jamar Clark, Kobe Eisler, Kobe Eisler, no conviction, no conviction, no conviction. You mean to tell me there has been over 400 murders reported? Over. Over. And only one officer convicted a minority man that killed a white woman. Come on. But he's the only officer that's guilty Come in the state on. of Minnesota. In history, he's the only officer to be convicted. Wow. If you're angry and you're sad, you're supposed to be. That shows your humanity. That shows who you are as a human being. If you're not angry, something's wrong with you. If you're not sad, something's wrong. You gotta go get a mental health evaluation. I pray for this day. I pray for this day. I pray. I pray. Minnesota is corrupted. This state needs to 
to be on the federal investigation. Yeah. Right now, dear God, 
that you touch the hearts of everybody do it, Lord. that can't see why this is happening. Do touch it, Lord. their hearts. Touch the hearts of the officers. Touch them, Lord. You know what you did wrong. Yeah. Come yes, forward. Oh, yes, God. Come forward. Yes. And the officers, dear God, that know that their fellow people did wrong. Let them stand with us. In the name God of Jesus. God did this so we can stand together. Yes. So we can yes, stop God. hating and hurting yes. for the yes. Right now, yes, God. in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, yes, yes. let not one word be in vain. Yes. Let us all turn to you, dear God. Yes, God. Let us all turn to you. Yes, God. In Jesus' name, in I pray. Jesus and you name. can call him Jesus, you can call him Allah, you can call him whatever you want to call him. Yes. It's about it's about believing in something. It's not about your your religion. That's a separation, just like race is. Right. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. We believe in a higher power. Yes. Nico from Unicorn, right? We're here live in front of the governor's mansion. You can whisper in my ear. Okay, I would like to do things. I want to introduce somebody that wants to speak his name is Wayne Kirkman. This event was organized by families. Families of support? Families. You used to say. Uh, yep. Uh, families supporting families against police violence. Find us on Facebook. All these families here are united. We're calling all families to the forefront. We need you guys. That was the end of this presentation of the families. Uh, there's going to be a, there's obviously a lot of people here. There's going to be a big, uh, big rally here.
joining. We're in front of the governor's mansion. Earlier you heard from uh, 13 families who have lost their loved ones to police terror. Right now, this is an action called Jail Killer Cops. We're going to take the stream down and come right back up with a new description for this action. And we'll be here recording it and bring it a live stream from St. Paul, Minnesota, on the a week after George Floyd's murder. Protests continue. Community, as well as other families involved with losing their loved ones to police killings, seeking justice and accountability. Thank you all for joining. This is Nico from Unicorn Riot. Check out our work at unicornriot.ninja to support us. Unicornriot.ninja slash donate. And we are a 501c3 nonprofit educational organization. Thank you. Have a good day. Peace.